Hello everyone, this is Jim Brewster, the service hydrologist here at the National Weather Service office in Binghamton, New York. Today is March 20th, 2015, and I'm going to present the Spring Flood Potential Outlook briefing again. This is the second uh, rendition of this outlook. One was done about two weeks ago, and that's the frequency that we do these on is about every two weeks. This graphic is showing the area of responsibility that the Binghamton office has as far as uh, rivers and streams go. We uh, monitor the Finger Lakes region and most of the Susquehanna down through uh, Luzerne County, uh, including the Chemung and the different uh, sub-basins, and also we uh, are responsible for the Upper Delaware as well. Our current flooding situation is looking good. All of these stream gauge dots here are showing green, which means there is no flooding at this time. Some ice jams did pass through a few of the gauges here, but they caused no flooding problems as the ice moved downstream. Taking a look at the precipitation amounts over about the last six months, in the upper left-hand picture, this is the uh, amount of precipitation that has fallen over the last six months and in the blue shade here is about five to ten inches throughout the Chemung Basin and the uh, Finger Lakes. The rest of the green shaded areas roughly is about ten to twenty inches of liquid precipitation since October 1st. If we take a look at the photograph here or the image on the uh, lower right hand side it's the departure from normal. So we've only had in much of the area only about 50 to 75 percent of what we should have up through this time of year since October 1st. So it's very dry here in the Finger Lakes, across the western Mohawk Valley, the Chemung Basin, and even the upper Delaware, and a little bit closer to normal for much of the upper Susquehanna, where they've had pretty much normal amounts of uh, either rain or snowfall. Here's a great photograph uh, taken from one of our polar orbiting satellites showing much of central New York and northeast Pennsylvania. And you can clearly see that we have a lot of snow still left uh, in the area, especially the Susquehanna region here. You can see the uh, rivers are all covered in white there, so they're ice and snow covered. Uh, the upper Delaware as well, the reservoirs here are snow and ice covered. Things have opened up though throughout, th throughout the Chemung Basin heading down into northeast Pennsylvania where uh, the rivers are open now and there's uh, much less uh, snow cover, maybe just some northern slopes showing some snow here. And uh, of course you can see the Finger Lakes are still pretty well frozen, especially the smaller ones. Seneca's wide open, Cayuga's northern end is still closed, and there's Oneida Lake locked right in. Taking a look at the snow depth comparison from two weeks ago until about yesterday, there's plenty of snow uh, loss that has occurred. You can see back on March 5th, all these deep uh, purples and blue shading here indicating anywhere from about 20 to 36 inches of snow, a little bit less for the Chemung Basin. And now over here on the graphic showing March 19th, we've lost much of the snow uh, in the Chemung Basin, especially in the valleys down throughout northern Pennsylvania on the Susquehanna. But there's still plenty of snow to go maybe uh, anywhere from 8 to 16 inches here and even higher in some of the hillier terrain like the Tully Highbergs throughout the Susquehanna. Upper Delaware has lost a fair amount of snow but again the headwaters still have uh, quite a bit of snow in the in the hills. Showing the snow water equivalent of that snowpack again back on March 5th plenty of snow 4 to 6 inches pockets of 8 inches maybe uh, one to three inches of liquid equivalent here in the Chemung in northern Pennsylvania. And now we've lost a good chunk of that, if not all of it, uh, throughout the Chemung and the northern branch in the Susquehanna. But we still have about two to four inches left of water equivalent throughout the Susquehanna and uh, much of the upper Delaware headwaters that still has to come out. And of course the Finger Lakes opened up a little in the west, but uh, still plenty of water uh, locked up here for the western Mohawk Valley. River ice conditions have been uh, the biggest problem over the past two weeks, but they really didn't have any major issues. We did have uh, several jams uh, that um, showed up on the Cahocton and Chemung rivers, and also uh, that moved down through the Susquehanna portion of Pennsylvania. 
And you can see here we've got some photographs from um, a jam that occurred around Elmira, which has since broken and moved downstream, and also one which was of concern near Falls, Pennsylvania, this old railroad bridge. Uh, that ice jam has also moved through. So no major issues from the ice uh, at this point, some minor flooding along the Susquehanna further south in Pennsylvania. But we do still have quite a bit of ice to go, so we'll have to be monitoring that over the next two weeks as conditions continue to warm. This is just a map I showed the last time as well, showing the frequency of ice jams that occurs and where they typically occur um, during any given winter. The larger the dot, the more reports we've had, so you can see um, that uh, the lots of reports usually come in from the upper Delaware and the tributaries to the Susquehanna and then a few along the main stem but not too much and and then again some of the trouble spots out here in the Shimon. USGS stream flows have uh, come up closer to normal and in some cases are in excess of normal. If you're looking at these graphs anything that's in a green or a blue shade is normal to slightly above normal. Any of the warmer color dots are indicative of stream flows that are still uh, below normal slightly. Anything that's uh, in, a, in a clear dot is either not measured or generally near normal. So you can see we've turned over to a lot of uh, the green and blue shades now. So as we went through that nice slow melt off, uh, rivers have come up as expected. Soil conditions around the northeast, no surprise, they are frozen and they are generally wet through about 10 centimeters uh, down. Uh, that's going to be something we'll watch over the next uh, few months, uh, especially because these, will, these conditions will change as the snow melts and the ground warms up. Uh, we will not be quite as saturated, or at least we hope we won't be quite as saturated because, uh, as, you, as you may know, saturated ground can lead to uh, some flooding because uh, the soils just cannot hold moisture if they're already wet. A quick look at the reservoir status. Generally, our Army Corps flood control reservoirs that operate on the Susquehanna and the Chemung basins are operating normally with normal pools. The Finger Lakes and Lake Wallenpawpack down in northeast Pennsylvania are actually below normal levels for this time of year, so they've got plenty of room to hold this melting snow, as well as the New York City DEP water supply reservoirs are uh, pretty low for this time of year as well. Again, they'll be able to capture a lot of that uh, melting snow as it happens here in the next uh, two to four weeks. So now let's look into the future. The general outlook over the next uh, 14 days calls for, uh, yeah, you guessed it, uh, the blue shades um, in indicative of cooler than normal temperatures and the green shading down here on the precipitation chart um, showing uh, above normal or slightly above normal chances of um, precipitation. So. That's, um, that's a good thing. We're going to remain um, generally near or, or cooler than normal. And again, we have to remember that uh, March normals are actually above freezing this time of year. So even if we're a little bit below, uh, chances are we'll still have um, a fair amount of melt going on with the snow. But at least this shows that we are not uh, really under any threat of a major significant fast warm up, which could bring us um, a significant problem with uh, melt off and uh, and possible flooding. When we take all the weather conditions uh, from our, our meteorological models and run them through the river forecast models, we get some results. And uh, these maps are, are rather boring because they're not really showing anything except for the land masses. There's no um, gauge points showing up, at least in our area. There's some to the south which are indicative of a, a small chance of flooding problems. But throughout the Susquehanna and um, and Northeast Pennsylvania, Shemong, Delaware, there are no gauges uh, that are being forecasted to have any, any problems with flooding, as well as uh, up through the Finger Lakes region on the, on the right image as well. Taking a look at the March, April, May general outlook of uh, greater than 50% chance of um, reaching a minor flood stage. There are some gauges that should things continue, um, you know, as we melt off the, the snowpack or if we get it to melt off a little faster, these gauges would have um, a pretty good chance of reaching um, minor flood stage. But again, without a major rain event on the horizon right now, um, things, are, things are looking good at least over the next two weeks. So uh, some things to remember. Uh, remember the snow melt alone will not cause major flooding. 
it might bring the streams up to um, flood stage or get some flooding in um, the natural floodplain of a river. But again, you really need a, a rain event with wind and high humidity and a substantial amount of rain actually to go along with the snow melt to cause any kind of major flooding of infrastructure, um, homes, businesses, roads, and, and, and other, so other things like that. Uh, the biggest thing we do have to worry about over the next two weeks as things melt off, we're not out of the woods in, in terms of uh, worrying about ice jam problems. There's plenty of ice on the uh, smaller tributaries and the, and the larger rivers that hopefully will just melt away in place, but there's a chance that it could come out again and move downstream, uh, causing jam flooding type problems. And the other thing to remember is even when the snow is all gone, we still have to worry about a rain event because don't forget the flows will be up. They may be above normal for through April and May. The ground will still be saturated, so it can't hold any excessive rain. So uh, we can't can't keep our eyes off the uh, off the rivers um, until we get past May and and June. We start drying things out. Here's what we think over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the weather forecast conditions right now don't suggest much of um, any problems as far as rapid warm-up or heavy precipitation, which is good news. Um, we're still going to be looking, of course, like I just said, about ice jam related flooding. And our best case scenario is to continue with what we've done over the past two weeks, and that's have that maple sugar thaw. Mild days and cold nights are perfect, as we've really just had evidence of and seen over the last two weeks. Lost about half the snow half the water content, rivers came up a little, uh, but nothing nothing out of the ordinary. And again, the worst case scenario would be uh, to have a, a warm storm with a lot of rain and just uh, keep an eye out for the rivers and the ice jam problems in your area and know where they are and be prepared to take action if you happen to live on a river that uh, is susceptible to ice jamming. So overall, just a summary graphic here showing the flood potential into early April. Uh, we've lowered uh, some of the basins up to the north here. The snow came out of the Finger Lakes a little bit, so there's a little bit less of a problem. And it's generally about an average condition for the chance of flooding through here. Uh, the Shemung has lost its snow for the most part, so it's all flushing through the system now. So barring a heavy rain event, we have normal conditions. Um, for um, potential flooding into the, f into the two-week future. So the areas that are still above, we've got all that snow in the north branch of the Susquehanna. We've got plenty of ice on the rivers up in here. So there's uh, an, an enhanced uh, risk of flooding in this area, which of course would translate down through the uh, northern Pennsylvania part of the Susquehanna, should that occur. And the upper Delaware, I, I made a little bit different shade, kind of a yellowish brown, and that's kind of in, uh, indicative of we, we're probably generally a normal uh, spring flood uh, risk, but again, with all that snow in the upper headwaters, there's just a slight chance that some of these uh, headwater tributaries could experience flooding. I don't think there'll be much uh, worry on the main stem part of the river, though. That's a pretty big, flat uh, river that really would need a really heavy rain event to cause any kind of major problems. But some of the smaller rivers, there may be an issue uh, crop up with ice. So we'll keep that one just kind of in between above and, uh, and normal. For more information, I'll let this graphic uh, go in the video for a little bit so you can copy down some of these links. You've already found this uh, at the YouTube channel on the top. Uh, the second link down is um, the link to visit our river stage and forecast page. The USGS has a great site. If you live near a stream gauge and you want to um, plug in and, um, a, a certain threshold of uh, river level that you might be concerned about, maybe, it's, uh, maybe you know what water gets into your basement at what level of the river, you can go to the USGS site, sign up, and it will text you when uh, you get to that or when the stream gets to that level so you can take action. And uh, of course, to f uh, monitor the temperatures and precipitation, you want to go to the fourth link there, which is our mobile site. And it also works on a uh, personal computer. So thanks for listening again. Um, I will be back in two weeks uh, with another video outlining the situation. And hopefully we'll have um, more of the snow gone, and uh, if not all of it, and the ice flushed through, and we'll be able to uh, carry on into spring and summer. Thanks for listening.